The development of Ghana is admirable, to say the least. Being one of the very first countries to break away from the shackles of colonialism, Ghana had an enviable head start in national development. Evidenced by architecture and economic fortitude compared with other African countries, Ghana is genuinely one of the many flag bearers of the continent. As developed as the country is today, a far cry from what it used to be 64 years ago, there is still one thing we can't quite shake off. Although we have been free for over half a century, there is still one thing about us that has not necessarily seen the whole light of emancipation. That thing is our culture. I believe Ghana has been undergoing a degree of an identity crisis since our independence. In every country, there are traces of colonialism in almost every sector. Whether it is the architecture, the laws, and even the country's languages, it is not uncommon to see the marks left behind from colonial rule. Ghana is no different. European-style architecture dominates the urban centers. Our official language is English, and until the late 90s, education in Ghana was structured after British education. In my opinion, none of these factors has had a severe negative effect on the citizens of Ghana. The real damage, however, lies in our attempts to fuse our traditional culture with that of our colonial rulers. Ghana has been a free country for 64 years, yet we still base our everyday lives around the culture of colonial Ghana. We have gotten used to the British culture so much that we confuse it with our own. From the clothes we wear, to our informal rules on physical appearance, we are still caught in the culture of our colonial rulers. A culture which they eventually modified to suit the demands of today's modern world. Take, for instance, the way we dress. In the Victorian era, it was ubiquitous to spot men wearing some variation of a suit for every formal event. This was a culture back then, a culture we adopted during our time as the Gold Coast. Even after our emancipation, we stuck with this part of British culture. Formal clothing for a man was no longer a variation of our local attire, but was, and still is, a variation of the suit. For the purposes of this presentation, let's ignore the fact that the suit was made by and for people who had no problem covering their entire body in heavy fabric because they lived in a cold climate. Whereas we choose to wear the same thing when we live in a tropical environment. I mean, it makes sense for us to design clothes for us, right? Instead, let's focus on how we have chosen to patronize a foreign culture instead of our own. This dilemma goes beyond the simple suit. Arguably the most crucial part of any country is its laws. Without them, the country would sink into chaos and turmoil. Many government officials enforce these laws, and any breach of them is disputed in the court in front of lawyers and judges. This makes members of the court some of the most influential people on the land. It stands to reason that anyone with such a responsibility dresses accordingly, right? Well, wrong. <laughs> in Ghana, our lawyers and judges are made to wear wigs that look directly cut from a sheep's head. Where did we pick this culture from, you may ask? The British. Along with many other Commonwealth countries, Ghana has chosen to retain the principle of wearing wigs made of horse hair that cost upwards of $700 depending on who you ask. We have chosen to accept the British definition of a formal look, forgetting we belong to a completely different race. The British man is Caucasian, light-skinned, with straight hair and coloured eyes. The Ghanaian man is dark-skinned, with kinky hair and dark eyes. Knowing the glaring difference between an African and a European, why do we still align with the British definition of formality, especially for a man? It's common knowledge that a formal look is clean and well kept. This concept remains largely constant regardless of the culture you align with. One thing, however, that varies from culture to culture is the hairstyle. For as long as I can remember, dreadlocks and afros have been considered informal and largely unruly hairstyles. I should know because, well, I have dreadlocks myself. 
I've received multiple comments from different people throughout the time that I have had dreadlocks, and many of them point towards the same thing. Having dreadlocks has put me in many situations where people assumed I was addicted to some type of narcotic or participated in fraudulent activities. Apparently, the haircut of a gentleman is a low cut. Ideally, there should be no hair on your head. Now take a wild guess where this perception originated from. It definitely can't be part of the, of the Ghanaian culture, something that we all perceive to be true. It's very easy to see the confusion in what we choose to accept as our culture. As the world progresses, it is becoming increasingly crucial that we find who we are as a nation. Discovering our true identity and doing away with any outdated and imposed facade of it would only increase the rate at which the country develops. For this reason, it is essential that we live as Ghanaians and not English.